Bowl is going off. We're talking about um, what's going on with these plants. And, and we're trying to flush these right now. And as you can see, we were running water through them. And we had the pH at like 5.1, 5.2. And we keep doing the runoff. And we just can't seem to figure out why the pH is just so high. So I took this tray out here. And you can see we're still having the problem here. Lots of messages. Everybody's beeping. And uh, as we come over here, now we've been flushing this quite consistently. And now that here, after running that, now three times it's still coming out of 7.1. The nutrients are 980, which is good. The temperature is 6665. But the pH 7.1 is just way too high right now. So we're really trying to stay on top of this and we're trying to work on this right now. So um, we're gonna do the pH testing with the Milamo because we're kind of curious, so we mix that up together. That actually came down to like 6.3, 6.4. You see as that balancing down. So it's definitely not the Milamo. So as we had the Milamo, we're kind of curious. We're doing all of our tests, right? So we tested the Milamo. You can see how it's just settling in the bottom there. And uh, we're kind of curious on what that would test back with. 6.5, I think it drops down to 6.4, 6.3, so it's slowly coming down. So we do know that that little top dressing of Milano didn't bring the pH up to like 7.1, 7.6, right? So we're still uh, diagnosing and getting this done here. And uh, as you can see, the runoff is still high. So I think the next step is, is trying to change the pH levels in these soils. And we're gonna do another top feed here today. We're gonna be uh, foliaging. What we're doing here right now is, just to ensure we know what's going on, because we are playing with the glowstone. Gotta show you what I'm doing here. We're gonna do this. We got fresh water coming on. Fill that up. And we're going to gauge it. We can stir our gauges in there. And we're gonna allow this to sit. And it gives you an idea of what this growth stone is probably coming in at. And as we start sitting it in here, it's starting to go up. And I had this as high as 8.5. So we'll let it sit because it first came out at like 7.2, 7.3. But well, this is just initially right out of the bag. And uh, we're kind of soaking it with some water right now. Now the water is uh, at about like 6.6.1 six, because we actually added lemon juice to it. So we've been adding lemon juice to actually use the pH down. So just like a little squirt. Like that. Mix this up. And well. So we're actually getting that down there. There you go. So this stone here, I should actually give it a better kind of um, test. We're getting that down there, water down to under five, five, eight, whatever. We're gonna start there. And we're gonna redo the test here. Okay, so I washed those stones. They came up as high as, as 8.1 as we let it sit. Then I, I, I took that when I was sitting in that water and I dumped it out, like it was like a flush cleaning it, and then I dumped it into that with some nutrients in it, that was at 6.1, it went up to 6.3. So it's showing me that, you know, if I rinse those stones really well, I'd probably be able to pull out of this, right? So we, we've done a couple rinses right now. The plants have got a good trim, as you can see, we're trimming in here. I gave it a good little trim in here. You can see these deficiencies, they're trying to pull out of it. Smell this one had a little bit of root rot. You can see the, the see you can see that just purpling here. You see it's striping here. So definitely getting stressed really badly. Same with this one over here now. You can see the stress in these plants. So we're gonna give it another foilage feed right now. We're gonna hit it with Medi One. And uh, we've pH this at 6.3 and the nutrients is at 980. Um, and we're gonna see if we can give them a little really big boost right now. Then we're gonna make some decisions on what we're gonna do with this stone because we're doing some tests here right now and if I'm able to rinse that out, so I'm having mixed messages from people. Some people saying they did great with the growth stone but they rinsed the stone before they put it in the bottom, not like me. Uh, I didn't rinse it. You guys watched me pour it into the stone. 
right into the bottom of the pots. That's a no-no. So there's a good lesson to learn. Um, May for one, don't always trust the bag that you're getting it from. Uh, B for two, rinse those stones. The hydrocorn, I got a new bag of hydrocorn. It's sitting, um, wait a second. I even got it ready, there it is. Got some hydrocorn sitting in the corner here because I thought we might do a complete transplant and get that hydrocorn in there. But we're definitely seeing some better growth. This one here is still stressed out. We're still seeing some deficiencies coming on this one. So we'll flush that one next again. And we're gonna have some monsters in here, guys. These plants are gonna be monsters. So we definitely have to get this running properly. We definitely gotta get that flush out of there because these are definitely gonna need to be using that res. And that's gonna be important. And uh, we're gonna let these dry out a little bit and we're gonna do another um, rinse. Day two of flushing and trying to get the pH back in the soils. Uh, we want the pH in here to be between 5, 8, and 6, 2. And uh, right now um, we're pushing like anywhere between 6, 6 to 7, 2. So we're definitely working on that. We'll get rid of the spraying. Okay, so we sprayed half. Um, we got our spray going on here, but I figured, you know what? Spraying for bugs and spraying for nutrients are two different ways because when you're spraying for bugs, you're spraying underneath the leaf. And really, you don't want to do that when you're trying to actually feed these plants because plants don't feed from underneath, they feed from on top, right? So you really just want to like basically miss the top. Oh, well, basically here, I'm going to show you what I'm doing. Okay guys, so as you can see, like when, when I spray for bugs, I spray so these plants are dripping and I soak underneath. But when I was spraying for food, I'm just doing it like a mist. Just misting it and letting it absorb through the leaves. It's kind of like uh, crop dusting. You don't want to hit it too hard, but just enough to give it a little bit of food. Get it going, make them a little happier, hopefully. See the harsh purple stalking, they're not happy, very stressed out, but we're seeing the new growth. It's hopefully coming in a little bit better right now. We're seeing that here. So, uh, making decisions on the room. Uh, and we're going to do another check on our pH after these dry out here. And uh, we're going to be running these just with straight water. Uh, this time again. And we'll make sure the water is pH a little lower at 5.8. To see what our runoff is going to be like. As you can see, this is the one that was fully locked out. Um, and you can see these are getting healthier on this side here. So we rinsed the hydrocorn uh, with that water. Now that water is coming in at pH 5.1. So it went up to 5.2. So I know that the hydrocorn, I always got to love the hair. Um, we know that the hydrocorn is in a high pH. So that's like fantastic, but always rinse. So I rinsed it. Now this nutrient here is sitting exactly where it's sitting right there. It's 5'6", 59 degrees, and the pH is 5'8". So I'm actually gonna rinse the hydrocorn with that in here. And we're gonna attempt to try and maybe transplant one of those because we're still trying to run the pH out of these and it's still coming in at 6'5". I can't get it below 6'5 for some reason. And we're running um, the... Well, basically, running cocoa is basically directly to the roots. You want to run the pH around 5.86, so it's still a little bit high. But at least we got it down by a full point because we were running around 7.6, 7.7, So getting those down below below 6.5 is really important, so we're working on that. But uh, right now, we did the hydrocorn, so that stuff's good to go. We have that ready. We're doing a little bit of a test here, and um, as always, uh, we're going to probably lock in, and we're going to take a better look at what we're going to do here pretty soon. Ready for this? 
have our air stone already in here. I'll put a new one on this side just in case this one comes out. If not, it does stay in there. We'll do a quick change over. So pretty much, these should be a little bit drier, but we want to kind of tip these upside down. And I'm just going to kind of give them a squeeze like I would do with a big flow. And we can see what we got going on here. Now, you can definitely see the bottom of this here. You can see the mess that's going on. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to find my airline. Here's my airline. I'm going to pull my airline out. Um, I just might knock off some of these stones here right now and see what happens. here guys is I'm just kind of pulling the bottom of these stones off and you can see the, the roots are nice and white but we know that these stone balance is really bad so we're going to see if we can uh, not cause too much stress on these roots and get rid of most of these rocks so you can definitely kind of pull them out slowly and now we're going to kind of reintroduce this right back into this other pot but we won't need to reintroduce I don't really want to disturb these roots too much, but I definitely want to get as much of this hydrogen stone out. And we saw how it just wants to hold. You can see how great the root mass is in here. Look at the roots. I mean, this is pretty amazing. You can see this. And having to do this is kind of like drastic. I know. This is kind of like last minute. Try and save these plants are pretty big, so. We kind of definitely, the auto park guy said the same thing. We had some advice as we got to try and get these stones out as much as possible and replace it. So we're slowly going to do this with a few. Trying to flush a couple other out. So I know that the new rock that I just put in here was already pH'd, rinsed, and clean. Look at that. Okay. I think I got most of these rocks out there. Just gonna pull this out. The key part is I'm trying to create a hole in the middle here on the bottom. So where the stair stone might wind up actually going. There you go. That was that transplant. And uh, see how that happens. Now I'm going to give this thing a full feed. And uh, that's number one. Now I can definitely just put this right into the tray now, knowing that this is going to be good to go. I don't have to stop this anymore. So. It's really called taking drastic measures. So that's number one. We tried flushing that one there and then the other two. I think I'm gonna do a transplant with the rocks. That wasn't that hard. We're gonna get rid of that growth stone. I'm gonna test the pH in this right now. Let's see what that is. It's kind of curious to see what's going on, right? So there you guys go. Okay, so that one's now getting its first feed with the new stone. You can see it dripping. So we're definitely gonna test the pH in that. See what was actually in the soil too. Might not just be the rock, so we gotta double check. So here's the rock, here's this. Let's get this going here. We know the pH in this is roughly around 6.3. 6 6.2. We wanna see if this is above this anyway, so let's just, we'll wait for it. That way we know. 
six two six three. I don't think it's gonna go above six three. And we're gonna see what this rock is gonna put us at right now. So we know this is gonna stay stable at six three. We've just had this in here the whole time. So there we go. A little bit of roots in there too. Because the roots is what was holding all that nutrients, so we're gonna throw the roots in there. We're gonna dump this pretty much anyways. And what's it going up to? Six four. Huh. There you go. I did get that one down to the six four mark. So that was kind of nice. So I did get the flush down to the six four. And I remember I was like bouncing six four, six five. But I want to see if I can get that down to five eight. So I did the hydrocorn. So we're testing that right now. So we are able to get that to there, and that's the nutrients in the bottom right now. Now, now we're going to see what's coming out of the bottom here with just the soil. Move this over. We do everything together. Wouldn't be the same if we didn't. So definitely got a full new rinse. So now we can check the food and see what's going on exactly in here for pH as well. So. All the checking. Booyah. 6.5. Okay. So we didn't manage to get her down. That says 6.6. Six, so you can see that actually the cocoa's holding. So now I'm curious on what's the pH in the cocoa. Still trying to get that to go around the five, eight, six point mark. Now the water that just went in there, the first flush, that's what we're feeding with right now. This is going right down to here. So we're having all kinds of number fun here, guys. Sorry about that being in the way. So right now we're feeding at uh, 60 degrees. The pH is 5.9 at 560. And, uh, well... We're just gonna do this. Let's see exactly what's going on here. But that was also hit with Malamo, and Malamo's pH is 6.5. So I'm wondering if that Malamo on the top is holding the pH and balancing the pH at 6.5. Because we're going in right now at 5.860. And uh, we'll actually do a little bit of a heavier one which is another cup. Now you can see the Malamo in the top of here. So we're definitely feeding that through too, getting it right down to the roots. And uh, can only do so much when you don't have a camera guy. So we're gonna wait for this runoff here. There we go. I'm gonna actually wait for a full runoff. Oh, that's a heavy plant now. Oh yeah. Six five it is. Six five everything will uptake. Six six. So we're trying here. Really, really trying. Whoa, close up. Okay, so the lights came on, and this is the one we did the transplant with. I think it looks like a little thrift damage for some reason. What's going on there? Let's go take a look at that. scope is you can really really take a really good look and I can assure you that uh, we've taken such a good look that there's nothing on that leaf and it was really cool to see that in this vein here like looking on the top because normally I look, always look on the bottom so I, I looked on the whole bottom just up and down it looked like um, maybe some beginning damage or something happened there but there was definitely no bugs in there 100% um, so that was pretty cool but when I flipped over the leaf and looking on the top of the leaf you can actually see along the vein 
going down it, you can actually just see it looks like the little tricone starting with a little run on it, like a tail. It's pretty cool, actually. Um, one day I'm going to figure out how we can all look together on that. But on that note, so that's the best thing. We're really checking, ensuring. Plants are doing better, considering they were locked out like crazy with the pH. Now, between the Malamo being at 6.5 and the rocks being at 8.6, 8.1, 8.2, we're really, 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 really trying to get through these with these ladies. And we are getting some, some better and newer growth, but we're still seeing deficiencies coming in. Um, we're still getting the, the pH, getting a bit of a curl. We've dropped the nutrients down a little bit and done a really good flush with the organics. And we're hoping we're going to be able to recover from this, but purple stocking right across the line here. You can see it totally. This one did suffer a pretty big transplant, but um, we're slowly flushing. Like I said, these are the ones that are all marked here. So we're going to go around, take a really good look here, and uh, we're going to give her another foilage spray, give her another little feeding, but definitely not happy. They're purpling all the way down here on the runs right now, so not good. Poor ladies, poor ladies. New systems. Sometimes things don't always work out the way they want you to happen. So, um, it's called the growing life, weed life. And uh, we're gonna get back in here and see what we can do. I, I'm actually thinking about just taking these out of the pots and putting them into seven gallons with dirt and then just feeding them by hand again and uh, reevaluating the next crop, reevaluate doing the auto pots next time around. So we'll see what happens here in the next 24 hours, but that might be the final end goal here is pull them out of the pots, put just pro mix around the outside of them and refeed them and hopefully balance that out that way. That might be the, the, the end fix here. So we'll see what happens. So this is just cocoa with a couple cups of water. The water was pH'd at 6.4. Um, so yeah, and then I threw that in the cocoa and it went up the parts per million, went up to about 230. So it's at 490. So we know those nutrients in the cocoa, like they always say, the temperature is at 6 and they actually balance at 6.2. Um, so pretty much that's on par. <laughs> oh, wow, we're just kind of eliminating everything. So now next step is throw the lamb in that with that too, right? So. Um, I guess we'll do that. I'm looking for a bag right now. I can't see one anywhere. Um, oh, down here. Okay, let's grab a bag of Malamo. And we're just gonna grab, we're gonna overdose it. Tablespoon. There you go. Add Malama. Even add some extra. We're trying here, guys. We're really, really trying. Boom. Did I change it? We're going to let that sit and we're going to come back. And, well, it's coming up. This is interesting to see right now. Well, it was at 6.4 in the beginning with the water, so it did go down, so it went up to 2. So let's just uh, kind of let that sit, and we'll see what happens. Okay, we've been soaking this for about 15 minutes, and <laughs> just bounced down to 6.7, but it was at 6.8. So, now, my question is, is I haven't been able to get this under 6.7, 6.8, and be trying flushing like crazy and just running water through it. So I believe it's the Malamo and along with the rock in the beginning because the rock was high. So now I'm dealing with two issues. I tried two new things. I'm dealing with two issues. I want to add some more soils. Can I balance this out? So I'm going to do this because I've tried running it with water. So now I'm just going to turn this into a little bit of a soup. And, and I know that that's at 6.2, so can, this, can I balance that out? Can I bring that down by adding topsoil to this whole thing? I'm going to be curious about that. So we're going to add another scoop into that and see what happens. Boy, talk about a learning curve. Okay. So we added two cups of the cocoa that was coming in at 6.2. 
We got it at 700 parts and temperature is a 5864Y. Well, this right here, you can see you can take this out. Yeah, I'm really all over the place here right now, guys. It's not like I'm being totally clean, but I've dropped this nutrient here down to like 595859. So there you go. So I've actually added that now. I topped that up as you can see with what I've been flushing everything with, which is running this nutrient solution through. And we now have this around around 65, 64, 65, which seems to be what I'm getting in my results there right now. So the question is, is I mean, how much flushing do I gotta do? Will the organics take over? Am I able to start dropping that pH? Uh, looks like that Malamo is really holding the pH in in, um, in the soil right now, so I'm seeing that. So, I mean, that's just full of a soup of Malamo and cocoa and nutrients. So the next would be to actually um, strain that, <laughs> which we have uh, a colander over there, <laughs> and then re add the nutrients and see what we get out of that because now it's it's kind of it's going back up again so it was at five nine as you can see so it goes up to about six four um i know the nutrient zone for me always is between 63 to 65 6.3 to 6.5 uh, when i'm aware of feeding in soil uh, when you're feeding the hydroponics you want the sweet spots around five eight to six five eight so really the sweet spot because you're feeding directly to the roots and you saw um, when we took out uh, the auto pots we saw those roots and we saw that's water we're talking feed directly to those roots so we really want to try and get that pH levels down in those top soils um, and maybe when we start feeding from the bottom again at the pH five eight maybe we can get some kind of a balance in there we'll see what happens but at least it's doing a lot better than the seven six readings that we we're seeing at the very beginning uh, seven six eight two was just ridiculously pH to huge and that was due to the, the the rock that wasn't rinsed and of course the malamo so the two new things i added combined to one another really well you can see the results what's going on here and we're still testing away here guys so um you know uh, if you don't learn from gardening and uh, you don't experience what's going on but um that's great for if you're in soil. Okay, you can see what's going on here. I've been flushing this like 10 times with all of this, so we're past that point. Now, we're just gonna run five gallons of water through this, guys. I'm gonna run water through this for the next 20 minutes, because it's literally just creating such a problem. So, I've never had to do this before. I've never had this problem in my life. Um, so this is just, just a first. So I'm going to run this whole thing for the next 10 minutes and see what happens. Well, we got ourselves some pH down. We were using lemon juice. And, well, we're getting rid of this stage right here. And we're even going to test the pH in our sunshine mix number four. And honestly, I really don't think I ever have. I've never really tested the pH in my soil because normally I pH it with uh, like Medi at like 6263 and I bring in at like 400 parts and I do my premix. But the reason why I'm doing this guys is we've been pre-spraying, we've been actually foliage spraying these with ProCal with um, a little bit of advice from our scientists at Green Planet. Tom, he's like, John, use, use ProCal. Don't use organic to spray. And um, yeah you got a major lockout and and no matter what I'm doing I'm not getting that pH down I'm trying some of them are some of them aren't uh, and I'm thinking you know what you know what I love to do I love growing in soil uh, and, and these trees these these are trees now because this veg has gone really really well so I, I kind of even even with the full transplant and changing the growth stone in here and stuff like that and everything we're, we're still this new growth I'm just not happy with it so we're going to put this in the 10 gallon pots. We're going to put the pro mix around it and hopefully buffer that out. Give it some, uh, give it some air. We're just going to add water to that. That, that water is going to come in at like 6, 3 and the temperature. So just what we have right there. So let's, let's just take a look here now. So right now our temperature is and that's our pH and that's conductivity. So let's, let's throw some of the soil in here because I'm just curious. And the best thing about this is you can actually just kind of, boom, there you go. So, I mean, if we're gonna get any kind of reading, we're gonna get a reading from from that, right? So there you go. That's what I kind of want to see. I want to see the nutrients in there around 350, 400. So we know there's nutrients in the Pro Mix. I would say there's about 500 parts. 
So our temperature, but our pH didn't did do nothing. And it's really oh went up to six one. Six two seems to be the good way of the soils. Even the cocoa was at six two. Um, nutrients four twenty. See, that's 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 good. You know, that's perfect for transplanting your clones or anything that you're going to be growing in. That's ideal. You got enough nutrients in that soil for the first week or two. You're going to see that, especially if you're using little babies, probably two weeks. So there's lots of nutrients in that soil. You do not want to add nutrients when you're freshly doing clones or, or uh, seeds or anything like that. There's plenty in this is the Pro Mix, number four. That's what we're going to use because that's what I had sitting here. Um, pH is 6.1. Temperature stays the same as 6.3 and yeah, four nutrients at 500. Um, that's good to go. So let, let's lock in, let's do a transplant. Let's just start transplanting. We got 16 plants in here. We're gonna leave the air stones in um, just cause I'm not taking the air domes out. Now I was thinking about taking that rock out, but now that I've rinsed it so much and I'm gonna add that to it, I guess I can add the rock, but I took the rock out of that one and added the hydrocorn and left the rock in this one and they're still balancing out the same. So really for me, taking that rock out at this point, because I've done so much flushing, um, now it's about trying to get that pH balance. So I did see a few in here that were at 6.5, 6.6. Six, six. So it's a 6.3 in that, but we have those ones in the back are all holding at a pH 6.9, 7. And same with these two right here. And they're the greenest, and they're holding a high pH right now. Um, and same with this one here. This one's still coming in at a bad 6.8, and that was after flushing it there. But uh, I kinda, I'm kind of excited right now to get into these 10 gallon pots and have some fun with it. We're gonna retry the auto pots, but next time we're gonna change the growth stone. We're gonna actually soak it. Uh, we're gonna do a little bit more research on that, not just jump in. And I wanna do that for the summer anyway, so this is gonna be an awesome crop, guys. Let's get back in here and get to work. This one looks the worst. That's the first one we're gonna transplant. Cause that's the one that, that it really smelled really bad too. So I actually did a rinse with hydrogen peroxide with that. We just added water to this, so this is pH at 6.1, as you already saw. And uh, we're going to kind of just lock in over here, guys. stone out of the back there so you can see how great the roots are with this. They are fantastic. Okay. Like they are really nice. Now the bottom of that is this little plate here. And I think that's where all my lockout is. So we're gonna test that. I'm kinda curious what that's gonna test back like. But pretty much that was a really easy transplant. We centered this right in the middle. And now I'm going to be able to just put dirt all the way around this and just kind of fill this in slowly. And I'll probably put the 45 gallon drum in here again because this is just making a mess. <laughs> so just put 
pretty much want to fill in the soil all the way around the edges. Definitely going to have to go get a few more bales of soil. So we'll do that. There you guys go. Transplanting out of these auto pots wasn't that hard at all. We definitely get good roots and stuff like that. And if it wasn't for all of that buildup in the bottom on that pot, I'd probably be okay. But these plants are pretty big now. So we're just going to get them out of the auto pots. And get them growing. thing I'm gonna make mention is how much a damn mess this shit makes man like it just it is what it is it's not like I'm like I'm a little sloppy just cuz I'm not trying to be neat here it's uh, easier for me to just get things done but there you guys go that was an easy transplant just got her out of the auto pot system quite nice these are big plants so they're gonna kind of hopefully bounce back really quickly and easily here you can definitely see how uh, is settling in there and we'll let that transplant it. I'm gonna clean this up and do it again put the 45 gallon drum in here. We'll shoot different parts of here and we'll get Mike over here to give us a hand too. I'm gonna have to stand these up and have to take them out. It might be a little bit easier with two people. So um, there you guys go. Transplanting in 10 gallon pots. I was gonna test that but I got it all dirty so we'll test the next one. Okay. We've done half the room. We've kept the air in. I'm kind of curious about that. Let me talk about that. I got rid of a lot of those stones. We knocked out the stones too. We got rid of those bottom discs. Those discs were just full of like sand and whatever dust was coming off of that uh, growth stone. But um, there's the first eight transplanted and into the 10 gallons. and. I'm actually going to tie these branches down, guys. I'm going to do this. I'm going to open up this whole... There's lots. These are big plants now, which is really nice to see. So it was kind of easy, but we're going to do... I'm gonna, I've really gotten used to have to stand up to transplant these, and actually quite easy, as you saw in the little first little episode there I was showing you. But um, there you guys go. We're um, even looking at maybe using these lines as feeding lines because we have... We have nutrients coming from that tank, so we'll talk more about how we might hook that up into a feeding system. But, uh... It's that time. It's, it's time to get down a little lower here. And, um, well... We've done a transplant. We had all these problems. It had nothing to do with the auto pots. It had nothing to do with the nutrients. It had everything to do with the grower. And not rinsing his stones, not taking a look at what um, uh, the difference was in pH levels of say the cocoa, the melaminite, the melamo, and the grow stone. A few key things I should have did before transplanting and getting into this grow. So, I mean, these are great trees. These plants are doing fantastic. Um, I transplanted eight of them on this side. Okay, I quickly wanted to show this one that was really yellowing. Look at the roots and how brown they are and how, how they're just not that well. So you can definitely see a difference here. And, and this plant's really flimsy. So, I mean, I'm just going to kind of set you here for a second. And you kind of get what I'm talking about. But you can see the color in this plant. There you go. So I just wanted to show you that. And look at this plant was really sick. You can see the uptake and you can see this is one of the better, worst ones like this one here. These two have both had the same traits. The roots, they kind of smelled, they were kind of going rotten and there you go. So 
You can see the difference with the roots for some of these healthier ones that we've already transplanted. So definitely see the difference when you see the top of this, what's going on in the basement down here, down below is where the problem lies.